Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vago Maradian here at the Paris Air Show at this historic airfield in Le Bourget. Our coverage here this week is sponsored by Bell and Leonardo DRS. And it's our honor uh, to have our first interview with uh, Walter Pinto uh, Jr., uh, who was the KC390 uh, program uh, manager, but now you are the head of all of uh, Embraer's defense programs. So congratulations on the promotion. Thank you, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for coming. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure. We had a, a flight just like we started the last Paris Air Show. It was a flight aboard the KC-390. This time was great. Uh, that one was, uh, this one is a production airplane that's going to be delivered to the Brazilian uh, Air Force. Uh, Walter, walk us through, um, this plane was supposed to have been delivered late last year, but uh, there was the uh, stall issue that you guys had, which kept you from going to the Farnborough Air Show. Talk to us about where the program is now, when, what the delivery schedule is going to be. Yeah, This airplane is the serial number four from our production line. It's going to be the first one to be delivered to the Brazilian Air Force. Our expectation is as soon as this airplane is back to Brazil after the show, we will start the delivering process. So it's together with the Brazilian Air Force, all the documentation, the acceptance process will take place. It, it probably will take a month or so. It's the first delivered for them, so it's a lot of learning how the documentation process works. But we are very uh, happy that this will be delivered in a couple of months from now. And uh, it's 28 uh, airplane is on the uh, initial order. Uh, what's the delivery schedule going to be like? How many a month are going to be delivered, for example, to the Air Force? So the 28 aircraft, is uh, the contract of buying 28 aircraft is uh, up to 2026. How many aircraft per year we will deliver? It's uh, confidential information because it's strategic information from the Brazilian government. But what I can uh, uh, tell you about this year, we are planning to deliver two airplanes. This first one and the, the second one is going to be by the end of the year. And then from now and then, we, we are flexible. Our production line can deliver up to 12 airplanes a year. So we can accommodate any request that the Brazilian Air Force may have. Uh, there are uh, more orders. We just uh, heard from Jackson Schneider, uh, the CEO of the company, uh, was uh, optimistic there are going to be a lot of uh, more airplanes that are going to be coming because there are partner nations that you have on the program as well. Uh, Portugal, for example, has said that it's interested in five airplanes. If I remember, Chile is interested uh, in uh, five airplanes as well. Uh, and if you look at it, uh, Argentina is partnered on the program. Aero Vodohodi of uh, the Czech Republic is on the, on the program uh, as well. I'm missing uh, one other person who's uh, also a partner. Yeah, we have a the strategic partnership be, uh, between the Brazil, Argentina, uh, Portugal and Czech Republic. So all those four countries that are strategic partner. But we are seeing movement from the market not only from those strategic partners. So we as this the the program progress and we are close to entering into service, so the, the market will start looking at us. So after the, the civilian certification, we, we could realize some more movement from the market, interesting to know more about the airplane. I think it's a matter of time that with the delivery and the airplane showing the capability under the Brazilian uh, uh, flag, so it will show the potential and the market will uh, even increase. So we are, as, as Jackson mentioned, so we are seeing a lot of interest already, a lot of regrets. There are some countries that we are not very advanced stage and stages and we we are very anxious to to give more good news very soon um, a civilian certification how long is that process going to take and when is that finished the civilian certification was already finished by october last year so the airplane is certified by all the commercial requirements uh anac requirements that it's uh, almost the same that faa and easa so we are now working on the military certification so we are showing all the the mission capability all compliance uh, uh, compliance to all the mission requirements and military requirements so we are already uh, uh, progressing very well as an example, we performed all their, all their drop uh, loads missions. Uh, we show compliance with all the Brazilian requirements. So the airplane we don't, doesn't have to test any airdrop anymore. But there are other military missions that we have to show uh, compliance. But the major ones will be show compliance with the requirements up to the end of the year. Um, let's uh, talk a little bit, though, about the market and how many of these airplanes you expect to build and deliver. If you look at it, that class of airplanes, there were about 2,700, 3,000. You had an exact number in the briefing. What was the exact number? No, we were talking about how many hours we were flying. Oh, yeah, got it. Okay. That, yeah, not how many planes got are it, there. So, yeah. <laughs> so I'm sorry. That's right. Uh, you, you did chime in with, uh, with hours. But uh, it's about 3,000 airplanes that are in this tactical class. Most of them are C-130 uh, aircraft. Most of them are a little bit on the older side, around 30 years old. So you guys see a great opportunity. But if you're looking at that 3,000 number, 
what's the number you expect to build? Do you guys have a number, say, hey, 600 of that market or 1,000 of that market? What number are you putting on the number of airplanes you guys are going to be able to get to? Because Jackson also mentioned that you guys can also increase, you know, your 12 a year is predicated on current standard production rates. The facility and the facilitation you guys are going to can surge if you put more people uh, against it. And now, you know, there are about 1,000 people in the company that are focused on this program. What's the size the number of these airplanes that you think you'll be delivering, say, over the next 10, 15, 20 years? Yeah, so uh, when we launched the program, we, we saw the, the potential. So we saw the how the market was there, all the, the, the old C-130s that would come to the final uh, life of them and that the needs of replace is there. So, but we, we, we target not only the operators of the C-130, we target any uh, air force that needs uh, a tactical medium transport air, multi-mission aircraft. So I think we, we bring uh, a new standards to the market, new technology that will capture uh, markets only beyond all what is available uh, only for replacing the C-130. So it's a multi-mission airplane. So that can perform several different missions from uh, cargo transportation up to the in-flight uh, 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 refueling uh, uh, systems. So I think uh, the market is there. So we, as well, Jack, Jack, Jackson mentioned, we we are prepared to up to 18 a year. So then you, you see how optimistic we are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see you're uh, optimistic, but you guys have succeeded in every other airplane you've uh, developed, uh, especially uh, for the for the commercial market where you guys are partnered, uh, obviously with uh, Boeing now, and there's a joint venture on the commercial aircraft side. And you also have a partnership on this airplane with Boeing as well, which I want to get to in a minute. But talk to us about the difference between the airplane we flew at the last Paris Air Show, right? You have a prototype, you then had uh, two pre-production airplanes. This is the number four, which is the first production airplane. Talk to us about how the airplanes are different. Yeah, I, the number three and number four in this one are, are pretty much the same air, airplane. So we those are production units. So the number three joined the flight test certification because also we need a final configuration to do all the airdrop tests. So all the cargo handling seats of this airplane or the airplane number three is the same of this airplane. So we didn't have to do any modifications, any adaptations to to be very realistic on how the series production would look like. So that gave us advantage on the flight test campaign when the number three joined it. So the, the, the one that you flew, the number three, is exactly the same of the number four. Uh, well, that makes it a lot easier. Uh, no, not, nothing different there. Um, as you got, what, what was the specific issue when you guys had that stall problem during flight testing that was the delay. Um, walk us through what the problem was and what the solution was. Yeah, it's it's confidential what what happened in there. It's a, 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 we we when our flight test campaigns, we 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 put the airplane in a very extreme envelope. So we test the airplanes in the most severe conditions, uh, and of course there are some some risks that we we mitigate, and the the airplane. Uh, behaves like we expect it to behave. So we didn't have to do any change on the systems or the structure or anything on the airplane uh, because of the incident. There were learnings in there, but not learnings on the product side. Um, if you're looking at customers around the world, um, what's the value case that you're making? Because for example, for somebody who has more demanding needs, they may want an airplane like this. But for others, you know, a lot of analysts or friends of mine say, well, you know, why wouldn't a 295 be enough for a guy who, you know, a nation that is not, uh, has as robust airlift needs uh, as this. And then there's the pricing on the C-130. You know, Lockheed, I think, is very aggressive and wants to make sure that it's selling its airplane uh, as well. Do you guys think that you're priced right in the marketplace right now in order to get those sales that you guys want? Yeah, I think this airplane uh, arriving the market, you know, shake the market. So the competition see that we are serious on that, and it's a very potential and important competitor uh, on the arena. So we bring a, a huge advantage in terms of the technology, the platform, the the our airlift capacity, the speed, the performance. So we can accomplish missions that the competition can't. So that of course will uh, uh, shake the market, and they will try to compensate that in a price tag. So we, we, we have to, to, to be very efficient in provide a total solution that makes sense to the customer, not only on the acquisition price, but it's the to total package, the training side, side uh, the support, <laughs> logistics, uh, and sustaining as well. So I think we are very competitive 
uh, not only on the price, but also on the product characteristics. How, how do you, um, you know, you guys have been very clear about what the advantages are, for example, over the C130. You guys are a twin engine turbofan, that's a four engine. Um, obviously, they've refreshed it with the J, but this is a brand new airplane with uh, a lot of commercial technology that you put into it, and I want to ask you about that. But Kawasaki also has come on uh, with an airplane. They launched it before you did, but yours was flying very, very similar in some respects. Talk to us about you know how you guys look at that part of the competition, and what do you think your strengths are in the market compared with the Kawasaki uh, C2? So uh, I think, again, our, our avionics, our full fly-by-wire system in a, in a closed loop, an active uh, side stick, as well, give uh, uh, more uh, less workload to the, the pilots to perform and be focused on the mission. And also, how the, the mission computer, how it was conceived to be integrated with the avionics, with the, the software uh, the developed by Embraer, like uh, the fly-by-wire software as well. So give us uh, uh, more flexibility to accommodate any change uh, needs to improve the airplane during the, the developed campaign. So we were able to to give uh, an airplane that, that is much more efficient and, and on terms of uh, completing the mission. So our efficiency will, will uh, uh, stand up and also uh, the, the speed and, and how we, we can deliver the, the same load faster than the competition. Uh, two questions because I know you got to go first. Um, there's a lot of commercial technology in this, but there's also a lot of unique military technology. Talk to us about what you drew from uh, the Embraer commercial heritage and then what you're developing new that's going to go back into the Embraer commercial products, which is your, your flagship, I mean the foundation of the company. Yeah. So uh, one example is the, the, the flight-by-wire system. So we start with the, the E-Jets. And then when we move to the, the, the executive jets, like the, the, fin, uh, the legacy and creators, so we took that technology and then we raise the bar and we bring some more functionalities uh, uh, to the, the executive jet market. So, and from that, we bring to the KC, now, as I just mentioned, the full fly by wire system with active side sticks. So that's one example of technology that we brought, but also the experience on the, on the commercial side with uh, airliners that they are driven by by operational cost they are driven by maintenance cost so we took out that experience of developing reliability system uh, uh, to the kc so the kc has the lowest uh, uh, maintenance uh, cost of the market the lowest uh, operational cost because the systems were developed with that mindset availability low maintainability and, and low cost of maintainability. So that's another example that what we brought from that. What we are, we are giving back, so we don't know because we don't have a new platform being developed on the commercial side right now. <laughs> and uh, are you able... We're, we're at the air show and there's... Uh, and, 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 yes. Um, so... That's right. Everybody should clean their work site no matter where they are. You know, that's, uh, I think everybody can endorse that. Um, have you guys ever said what your cost per flying hour yet is? Do you want to make some news now and tell us what your cost per flying hour is? No, we, we, <laughs> we, we haven't. I think we, we will soon uh, give more, more details on that. I'm uh, looking forward to it. Now let's talk, uh, last question, on your partnership with uh, Boeing. Um, that's something you guys have been working on for a long time, both on this side of the uh, program, but also on the commercial aircraft side of the program. Talk to us uh, where you guys are in that process. Jackson said you guys are going to be uh, picking a name uh, for that, but also how the duties and responsibilities in this, you know, how are you dividing the workload with Boeing? Yeah, by now we are on the preparation phase, we're in the planning phase. So we, we cannot do anything together besides planning for the future. We need to wait for all the regulatory authorities to approve the deal, then we can start operating together. But the, the goal and the vision is to collaborate on the marketing in the marketing of this aircraft. I think what Boeing's bring to, to value to, to this program is to open new market and, and, and use all the influence of Boeing uh, uh, on, on the market. So we, we are on the, on the planning phase. We, we can't say anything else uh, uh, by now because we would be jumping uh, in, a, in an arena that we are not able to, to say. Walter Pinto Jr., uh, the head of Embraer's uh, defense business. Sir, thanks very much. And next time I'm going to talk to you about a whole bunch of other things except aside sure. from the KC-390. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much and have a good show.
I'm looking forward to it. Same to you. And it was a great way to start it by flying on the airplane. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful plane. Best of luck with it. Thank you very much.